Israeli forces kill a reporter working for the Qatar-based Al Jazeera TV network in the occupied West Bank. Shireen Abu Akhle was fatally shot while covering an Israeli army raid at the city of Jenin. She was a veteran Palestinian reporter for Al Jazeera's Arab language channel. Israeli officials say the Palestinians may be responsible for the death of the 51-year-old journalist. But another reporter accompanying Abu Akhle, who was shot in the back, calls the Israeli claim an outright lie. The occupation is murderous and criminal. They shot us for no reason. We, a group of journalists, were there wearing our full press uniform in addition to the helmets with the word press written in large letters, as big as the whole world. We were obvious. We made sure to walk right in front of the army patrols so that they can see us and they saw us after we went to a road where there were no armed people, no civilians, and there were no shooting and no incidents there. We were shocked by the shooting. I was lucky and I turned my back when the first bullet was shot and injured my back. They wanted to kill me. I was injured in my back and the second bullet shot my colleague Shirin and caused her death. There were no armed people and we cannot put our lives in danger and say the wrong narrative. The Israeli army is a liar and criminal and despicable. Samudi, who was shot in the back by Israeli troops, is now in stable condition. In the meantime, the Palestinian Health Ministry says a Palestinian teenager was also fatally shot in a separate Israeli attack in the West Bank city of Albere. Richard Methurst is a journalist who joins us uh, to share with us his thoughts on this. Obviously, this is not a good day for journalists, but more so, uh, it's highlighting the way that uh, Israel um, has targeted journalists uh, in the past. So it's, it's not a new thing. but. Uh, what, what's your reaction to what has happened, specifically with a journalist that uh, has covered the occupied territories for, for such a long time and I'm sure was on Israeli radars? Wh wh why do you think they targeted her in this form of manner? Well, first of all, thank, thank you for having me. And uh, I have to be honest, this is a very grim and sad day. Uh, I, I, as soon as this news broke in the morning, uh, I have been really, really upset um, because uh, when we're talking about um, uh, Sharin Abu Akhli, she, she is like a household name. Everyone has grown up watching her on television, covering the Palestinian uh, issue and uh, exposing the Israeli occupation for what it is. And like you said, she's without a doubt on their radar. Um, the thing is that, you know, people have become desensitized to violence against Arabs and violence against Palestinians. That This is going to go unpunished and unsanctioned and so on, right? If, if this was a Ukrainian a uh, uh, female journalist that was killed by the Russians, it would be front page news. But if you go and you look at the New York Times, you look at CBS, they, they don't say that Israel shot Sharin dead. They say that she was fatally shot during clashes. There were no clashes. We have all seen the videos. Uh, she was wearing her press uh, uh, patch, the helmet. So were the other uh, journalists with her, her colleagues from various other outlets. And they were fired upon intentionally. This bullet hit her right here in the exposed part and, and blew her face off. It is absolutely heartbreaking and, and, and revolting. And this is really, again, uh, emblematic of what the Israeli occupation is and how they treat uh, Palestinians and journalists. And we remember last year, they bombed in Gaza the press buildings of Al Jazeera and the Associated Press, and they got away with it, and no one cares. And this is, again, a continuation of that. And the fact that this happened to uh, uh, to Sharin. I mean, th this is really, it, it would be heartbreaking uh, uh, regardless, because every day we're seeing Palestinians being brutalized and killed like this. But uh, for someone that everybody knows, who is, they've grown up watching on their TV screens, it, it is really tragic. And, um, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a miracle that the other ones uh, uh, escaped uh, relatively unharmed, because we have to remember, Israel fired, they opened fire at this entire group of journalists. So uh, the facts uh, obviously are out there, and it's pretty obvious what has occurred. And of course, you have uh, the uh, person who was accompanying him, her, uh, by the name of Samudi, who was shot in the back by Israeli troops. Yes. We just played the soundbite, Richard. And he clearly said that there was uh, nothing going on in that area. Uh, but you have Israel now trying to attempt to shift the blame uh, and say it was due to Palestinian fire, uh, gunfire. Um, I mean. Uh, Who's, who's going to buy the, that narrative, unless we're talking about the, some of the Western media outlets that may be reported that way? It's despicable. 
you know, how, how many decades are they going to continue this idea that, oh, it's clashes, it's both sides. There, were, there was a gun battle. There was no gun battle. The Israeli foreign ministry, the occupation foreign ministry, and, and their prime minister, Naftali Bennett, they, they've been posting online, they've released a video, supposedly, uh, uh, suggesting that uh, a Palestinian shot her, right? So the, the audacity, right? They, they, they kill her and then try to uh, pin it on the Palestinians. And the problem with this video is that it's been very easily and quickly debunked uh, by uh, uh, things like uh, uh, Beit Salem. And you can see that nothing matches here. Um, this video that they are showing is hundreds of meters away from where Sharin was. The audio does not even match. There is nothing of the sort going on. These two, these videos are, are completely different and the Israelis are trying to shift the blame and make it look like there was some clashes and the, you know, this group of journalists were irresponsible. I, let me ask you something. Sharin is a veteran correspondent. She has been doing this for decades. She, she knows better than anyone this area. Again, she's from Jerusalem, but she has covered all over Palestine. She knows what to do. She's done this as a, for a long time. She's the best of the best. And I find this very hard to believe that suddenly, you know, she put herself in harm's way. This is completely untrue. And you need only look at Israel's behavior towards medics, doctors, nurses, media personnel, journalists. They, they kill and injure and wound with impunity. And, and why wouldn't they when no one is holding them accountable, right? The, the, you're not going to see any sort of reaction from the Americans. And this is, this is the irony. Sharin is actually a dual citizen, to my knowledge. So she, she is also an American citizen. Do you think the State Department and Biden are going to make a fuss about her? Never. Never, because she's Palestinian, so she's not worth the trouble for them, and they want to okay and allow this Israeli violence. And I, I am really, really shocked, and it shows you once again how the Israelis, they claim to be a democracy. They attack journalists regularly. We saw them beating journalists outside Al-Aqsa Mosque the, in the last weeks. And they, they don't care about women. They talk about women's rights. Where are all these feminist groups in the West, the women's rights champions? Where are they? Where is their outrage about the, this horrific brutality? I'm, I'm really sick to my stomach over what I saw. Uh, we also have to pay a little bit of attention here, and I'd like to use you uh, for this and, and see how you assess it, Richard. Um, as, as you stated, and as I stated, and as is well known, she has been around for quite some time, uh, joining, uh, I think, Al Jazeera back in 1997 and uh, extensive coverage since the year 2000. And uh, she was in an area, uh, Janine, where uh, there's a lot of, uh, obviously, Palestinian anger, and you, it does get raided quite often. Um, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'm wondering if uh, Israel wanted to send a message by uh, targeting her and then assassinating her, as uh, some have called it, in the form of manner that she was uh, killed. Uh, because it seems like they have been given a green hand by Naftali Bennett, when, if you recall, a few yes. weeks back, that you can go all out, uh, pretty much saying that, you know, it's what, however way you like to go about um, the uh, way that uh, people are protesting, et cetera. Yeah, uh, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, uh, Bennett basically declared open season, right? Uh, everything is permissible. And uh, on, on the one hand, it's kind of a sad irony because when wasn't everything permissible? They've been getting away with murder literally for decades, right? But he did say that and he, he basically enabled and emboldened the Israeli occupation forces to really just go wild. Now, honestly, I, I don't know if the, the, the Israeli uh, occupation soldier who shot her actually knew who she was, perhaps given the distance and, and so on. But the, the thing is, e even if it was somebody else, I, they have no doubt they would have killed them, right? With the other journalists, actually, they were under fire as well, right? Her colleague uh, uh, Ali had, was hit with one bullet. So it it's, shows you how indiscriminate and brazen and callous and reckless and, and shameless they are about this. They, they're just opening fire spraying at journalists because they don't want people finding, about their, uh, finding out about their crimes. You are not gonna see a CNN journalist or a BBC journalist down in the mud in the trenches covering the Israeli raids on Janine the way that Sharin and her colleagues do because they don't want to expose this, this brutal occupation reality. Sharin and her colleagues, they put in the work. They are truly, you know, the, 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 the cream of the cream. They go into the war zone. They show you the brutality and they are not afraid. And she literally gave her life. She was martyred doing what she did best which is giving a voice to the Palestinians, giving a voice to her people, giving a voice to the oppressed, and exposing the Israelis for what they are. And even in her death, even in her martyrdom, she has once again told us who the Israelis are. They are oppressors, colonizers, and they have no respect 
for anyone, whether it's medical professionals, journalists, women, they are treating the Palestinians like they are not even human beings. And this is the embodiment of that behavior. Yeah, I don't think uh, I can add much more to this. Uh, thank you. A sad day, but thank you for your thoughts, Richard. Richard Methus there, journalist from Vienna. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.